The Exxon Radio Show with Rob McConnell is largely an opinion talk show. All opinions, comments, or statements of fact expressed by Rob McConnell's guests are strictly their own and are not to be construed as those of the Exxon Radio Show or endorsed in any manner by Rob McConnell, Relmar McConnell Media Company, the Exxon Broadcast Network, its affiliated networks, stations, employees, or advertisers. All-Hit Radio! Welcome to the X-Zone, a place where fact is fiction and fiction is reality. Now, here's your host, Rob McConnell. Welcome back to the X-Zone, everyone. My name is Rob McConnell, coming to you live and around the world on the Talk Star Radio Network and our fine family of broadcast affiliates across Canada, the United States, Central America, South America, the Caribbean, the Pacific Rim, 20 Asian countries, and across Europe. If you'd like to give us a call, our toll-free number is one 877 My email address is xzone at talkstarradio.com and on MSN Messenger, talkstarradio at hotmail.com. And our new website, www.xzoneradiotv.com. My guest this hour is Stephen Lachance. He is a radio host and producer who does a morning drive time show in Washington, Missouri. His story was featured on the Discovery Channel's A Haunting and in the Booth Brothers documentary, The Possessed, to be released in October of 2008. His book, The Uninvited, The True Story of the Union Screaming House, will be released on September the 1st, 2008, by Llewellyn Worldwide, and is available for pre-order exonation at Amazon.com. He also appears in Children of the Grave, another documentary by the Booth Brothers. Stephen's experiences at the Union House inspired him to form the Missouri Paranormal Research which he left in 2007 in order to help people privately in extreme haunting situation. He has successfully investigated and concluded many cases. Stephen speaks at paranormal conferences and will be traveling across the United States with Haunted Survivor, the tour, starting in January 2009. And Stephen Lachance, welcome back to the Exo. Nice having you with us tonight, Steve, and congratulations on your new book. Thank you, Rob. Good to be back. It's good to talk to you, my friend. Good talking to you, too. What's been new through all... What, you've been really busy since you and I last talked. <laughs> I have Holy been cow. incredibly busy. Incredibly busy. I wrote a book since I talked to you last, my friend. Yeah, you sure did. <laughs> and, yeah, uh, the, the book has been the biggest part of everything. You know, I, I put a lot of time and effort getting that done. Uh, I really wanted to, to, to go ahead and uh, write it. It took mm-hmm. a lot of time. You know, when, when the last time I talked to you, I wasn't sure if I was going to do it or not. Uh, I finally decided to go ahead and do it. And so that's I was kind of in hiding for a while. Why? Uh, well, because I went in hiding to write the book, and I, I was filming, and I was doing these private cases, and um, and that's what I was doing. So, you know, it, it took a lot of my time. So, so uh, I was kind of out of the too. public eye for a little bit. So that's where you disappeared to, huh? Yeah, that's where I disappeared to. So, uh, and now that the book is ready to come back, it will come out in September. Uh, I'm coming out a little bit more. So you, you must be really excited. I, I am thrilled. I am thrilled. I'm very proud of the work I did with this book. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, it's not every day. You know, we've had a lot of books that were written by investigators, uh, by people that have survived hauntings, but not many of the people that have survived hauntings actually turned into someone like me that goes out and helps people that now live through it. So, you know, this is, this book is unique in a lot of ways because I made a lot of mistakes uh, when I was going through it. Uh, this was a four-year period that I lived in. And for mm-hmm. the listeners that don't understand, The Uninvited is my personal story. It's how I got involved uh, helping people. I, I, in 2001, if I could tell a little bit. All I, right, I why don't we do this, Steve? Let's take a two-minute commercial break because when we come back I, from the break, I won't be, I promise, I won't interrupt you until we have to go to the news. You know how it is being in this industry. There's certain breaks you can skip, and there's others that are hardcore, and I don't want to smash into one tonight. Stephen Lachance is our special guest. He's the author of The Uninvited, The True Story of the Union Screaming House. And Stephen Lachance and I will be back on the other side of this commercial break in two minutes. My producer tonight is the one and only Batman. 
For more information on Stephen, visit www.stephenalachance.com and to get a pre-order of his book, go to Amazon.com. The Exxon with here is truly Rob McConnell continues in two minutes right here from our studios in Hamilton, Ontario, Canada on Talkstar. Take a step back in time and discover old Florida cuisine at Marsh Landing Restaurant in Felsmere. Enjoy delicacies such as frog legs, gator tail, catfish, and swamp cabbage, or enjoy the more traditional cuisine like hand-cut Angus steaks, ribs, and seafood. Join us for breakfast with a southern flair featuring sweet potato pancakes, biscuits and gravy, and much more. Planning a party? Marsh Landing's private dining room can accommodate groups from 8 to 80 people. While you're visiting, enjoy the historic pictures, artifacts, and stories that line the walls. Marsh Landing is truly a unique experience. Marsh Landing Restaurant, 44 North Broadway in historic Felsmere, or visit marshlandingrestaurant.com. Marsh Landing, old Florida cuisine at its best. Did you know that when you're on the road with limited data or Wi-Fi, you can still listen to the X-Zone radio show with Rob McConnell, The Science of Magic with Gwilda Wiaka, X-1, Dimension X, Space Patrol, and every minute of the X-Zone broadcast network by calling 213-401-0080, courtesy of Audio Now. No smartphone, app, or internet needed. It saves your data plan and it's free if you have unlimited minutes. Call 213-401-0080 to listen on any phone, anytime, anywhere. Remember 213-401-0080 for the best of the paranormal, parapsychology, and sci-fi radio programming anywhere. 24-7-365. Are you interested in the paranormal, ghosts, UFOs, or psychic phenomenon? Join me, Tim Bartley, co-host of Talking to Spirits with Lightworkers Tim and Justina, coming mid-January 2017 to the XZBN. We will channel spirits live and talk to them, revealing all kinds of amazing information. Spiritual attachments will be found and removed on the show, and so much more. To find out when you can listen to Talking to Spirits with Lightworkers Tim and Justina, visit www.xzbn.net for listeners on both sides of the veil. Stephen Lachance is our special guest. His website is www.stephenalachance.com, or as they might say, Stephen A. Lachance. How do you say it? How do you say it in the U.S.? Well, in the U.S., you know, it depends where you are. Uh, you know, in, in Missouri, they say Lachance, unless you go to Southern Missouri, where it's a little bit more French, French than yeah. it's Lachance. Yeah, it's just like when Jeff's on here. It's he's Jeff Belanger up here in Canada. He's Jeff Belanger. Uh huh. I don't know. <laughs> It All right, depends so, where you are. That's right. I, and I'm, I'm sorry if I... How do you say your name? I appreciate, you know, when I come on this show, when you say LaChance, because it's the way my grandfather said it, and it's actually the way it's supposed to be said. So what you're saying is I remind you of your grandfather. Well, no, not, you, know, you don't remind me of my grandfather. <laughs> I just appreciate the way, you know, it's the oh, right thank pronunciation, you. Rob. And I thank you for I, that. I appreciate that. Okay, Stephen. Um, tell us a little bit about the Union Screaming House, would you? Well, you know, we, I moved into it with my, my three children in 2001. Mm-hmm. I was a skeptic at that point. I was, uh, I was not the kind of person that I would think would ever be doing the work that I'm doing. Uh, we moved in. Uh, it, very shortly, uh, we went through a whole series of things. I had children that were claiming uh, that they were being chased, that they were okay. being uh, um, uh, terrorized. I, I had At one point, I had all three kids in bed with me. Uh, claiming that all sorts of things were going on, and I'm thinking, my gosh, what's going on? 
Uh, at one point, uh, and, and I'm very capsulizing this, you know, for the show. Sure. But at one point, uh, I, I actually saw this thing myself, and, and the reason they call it the Screaming House is this thing actually screams. Uh, and at that point, when I saw it, I, I, I got the kids, and we were going to, you know, I, at that point, my b- belief system crashed. And I, I took the kids, and I was going to leave the house, and I was trying to do it calmly. I had just seen a smoky black figure of a man walk into the room, the same room that I was sitting in. And I, and I told the kids, let's, you know, I, w- I was going to take them for a drink is what I told them. And we got up to leave, and as I, I went to leave, it was an old house, and I went to put the key in the door. And as I went to put the key in the door, the house started screaming. It was a male scream. Uh, by that time, they knew something was going on, uh, and, and we left. Um, you know, I ended up going back uh, because we didn't have anywhere else to go. It was our house. You know, we, we had just moved. Uh, actually, they ended up being locked into a bedroom uh, at one point where I couldn't get to them. Uh, and that's the story uh, that uh, The Uninvited is about. Uh, this lasted from 2001 through 2005 because I actually went back as an investigator after we moved from the house years later. Uh, we left in 2001. I think we lasted a maybe oh, a total of 13 days in the house on a total. Uh, but it had such an effect on me uh, mentally uh, emotionally, that it stuck with me, and I actually started doing research, and it's how I became an investigator. I, I, I you know, I, I use the the word investigator loosely because um, I think I'm a little bit more than just somebody that investigates these things. You know, I go out and I help families, and um, that's how I got involved in this. And I actually went back, and and I don't suggest doing this. I went back and I actually you know, did research on my own haunting and tried to help a family that was living in the same house that I was living in uh, with uh, dire consequences. Um, you know, and the, that's what the, the story's about, and that's what The Screaming House is about. Uh, can, can you share with us some of the people that you've helped and what their circumstances were? Sure. Uh, you know, there, there's a family uh, down in uh, southern Missouri. There's a, that's a good case. Uh, the uh, poltergeist case, actually, uh, where the young girl was uh, taken from her mother to live with her grandparents. Uh, what happened there, immediately the grandparents started experiencing horrible, horrible things, where the house actually started, um, uh, things started falling around and down in, inside the house. Uh, the, all their belongings started crashing down around them is the best way to describe it. Uh, you know, what we found out from there is the agent, you know, with a poltergeist case, usually there's an agent. Uh, the young girl was in such mental distress, spiritually, emotionally, uh, that, you know, once we got her some spiritual uh, counseling, uh, we, they weren't letting her see the mother. We got, we were able so she could start seeing the mother, uh, that a lot of that was settled. Uh, that was a big case, I thought, you know, because at one point I remember Rob standing in the middle of the living room with the, with the grandfather, a man about, and he was about 77 years old. Uh, he brand new television, I remember, it was an RCA widescreen that literally uh, something, a basket, it was a wire basket it had been thrown, and this, this television was crashed. Um, I had a lamp thrown in my head during that case. Um, But this gentleman standing in the middle of the living room with me, and I remember looking at him, and he's, you know, this is typical of these type cases. And he's looking at me, and he's crying, and he's like, please help me. You know, that kind of thing, that's the kind of emotion that, you know, these people are going through. They, They want help. You know, and that's the thing that I can remember going through is, you know, I wanted help. I wanted somebody to reach out and help me, and that's that's the kind of thing we do. Um, is we go out and we look for these cases, and when we come across them, we help these people and we guide them. Uh, just a recent case, a uh, family, a young boy that was being terrorized uh, by something. We actually, it was, uh, we actually saw a video first of it. Uh, you know, he, he was not sleeping. Um, the thing would come in the room with him at night, and I've never seen a child react with such terror in my life. Um, and these were not just your typical night terrors, Rob. I mean, this child 
was seeing something completely horrible, screaming like I've never seen anything before. We actually ended up having to turn this case over to clergy um, and actually had the house blessed. And the clergy actually, he, for one, the child wasn't baptized, christened. We had him christened. And once the blessing and everything went through, um, that family's now living in peace, you know. So when you can bring peace to a child, you know, that's a wonderful thing, too. Uh, you know, those are the kind of things that, that I deal with, on, you know, on a weekly, monthly basis. Where do these negative spirits or negative entities come from? I, you know, I don't, I don't put labels on them. You know that, um, you know, because he, he, the thing is, is he, you know, I've dealt with pagans, yeah. I've dealt with Christians, I've dealt with every walk of life that you can think of have, you know, that has had these negative type things. Um, I think that it's possible that you know, if you're negative in life, you're negative in death. Um, I, I believe that there's, you know, there's the yin and yang, you know, in energy mm-hmm. out there. Um, my personal belief, I believe in demons, you know, but I don't push that belief on someone else. Um, I, you know, I, you know, I, I believe this negative energy exists. You know, whether you want to call it demons, whether you want to call it a negative energy, whatever name you want to put on it, it is out there. It is it is not always the spirit. And I don't like the name haunting a lot of times either, because I feel a lot of these cases aren't hauntings. Uh, this is a different character altogether. Um, they're a different creature altogether. Some of these things are very predatory, and I think they're more like predators than they are, uh, let's say, a spirit or a ghost. Uh, they're not a ghost a lot of times, you know. Um, it just depends what you want to put the word on it. I tend to not try to label it. If you would ask me what my personal belief is, mm-hmm. personally I would call them demons. Um, I leave that up to whatever I'm dealing with with the person, what they want to believe. But personally, I, I feel they're demonic. Does that make sense? Yes, it does. Okay. <laughs> y- yes, it does. Now, do these demonic entities actually have the ability to cause physical harm absolutely absolutely i've seen i've seen cases where people have been thrown scratched touched uh... raped Um, you name any amount of things uh... with the union haunting uh... uh... the the woman that we that we deal with there uh... i saw her scratched uh... choked uh... bit uh, he actually, Rob, actually human bite marks that would show up down her arms. It was impossible for her to absolutely do herself. Um, you know, yeah, these things can, these things can harm you uh, in, in ways that you cannot believe, uh, and it's quite common. So how do you protect yourself against these negative entities, these demons? These demons, how do you protect yourself? You, 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 you know what? The funny thing I found, the most common thing that I found out there with these people, and I found it with myself too, Rob, is the people that did not have a solid belief. If you're going to believe in something, believe mm-hmm. it in wholeheartedly, okay? You know, have faith in something. Uh, believe in something. It's the people that are on the fence. You know, these wishy-washy people, yeah. oh, I might believe in something, I might not believe in something. Those are the people that, that seem to get in trouble. Uh, those are the people that these type things seem to, to, to hone in on. Uh, you know, if you're not going to believe in uh, a God or, or something like that, then believe it with all your heart, man. You know, if you're going to believe in it, believe it. You know, you just can't stay in the middle there. You know, I was in the middle there, and I think that's what got me in trouble. And time and time again, I see it's when these people are having these spiritual struggles within themselves. Uh, it seems that's what makes the, the, it almost looks like it paints the bullseye on their back for some reason. Uh, you know, so I always tell people, whatever it is that you believe in, whether, you know, if I'm speaking at a conference or something, I'll set out a chair, and I said, mm-hmm. you know, if you believe in this chair, believe in it with all your heart. You know, don't be sitting on the fence, because if you don't believe in this with all your heart, that's when you're going to get in trouble. All right, Stephen, please stand by. You and I have to take a commercial break with the news at the bottom of the hour. Stephen A. Lachance is our special guest, www.stephenalachance.com. Stephen and I will be back talking more about investigating the paranormal 
confronting negative entities, demonic things from the dark side. When we come back from this commercial break, if you'd like to give us a call and share a story with us or ask Stephen any questions, one 877 That's toll-free throughout the U.S., Canada, Alaska, and Hawaii. And we will be back on the other side of the news as the Exxon continues right here on the Talk Star Radio Network. Don't go away. This is the Exxon Broadcast Network, broadcasting worldwide on broadcast affiliates and satellite program providers, including CNN Broadcast Network, Sirius Satellite Network, Star Media, Good News Radio Network, Angel Broadcast Network, Wiki Broadcast Network, and WPBN-TV. For more information on the X-Zone Broadcast Network, visit us at www.xzbn.net. Did you know that when you're on the road with limited data or Wi-Fi, you can still listen to the X-Zone Radio Show with Rob McConnell, The Science of Magic with Gwilda Wiaka, X-1, Dimension X, Space Patrol, and every minute of the x Broadcast Network by calling 213-401-0080, courtesy of Audio Now. No smartphone, app, or internet needed. It saves your data plan, and it's free if you have unlimited minutes. Call 213-401-0080 to listen on any phone, anytime, anywhere. Remember, 213-401-0080 for the best of the paranormal, parapsychology, and sci-fi radio programming anywhere, 24-7-365. Welcome back to the X-Zone, everyone. My name is Rob McConnell, and this portion of the X-Zone is being brought to you in part by Amira Soul Mystic, Master Clairvoyant Healer and Spiritual Teacher. Uh, she's uh, creating life changes, and if you'd like to give her a call, 1-800-659-6796. That's one 800 Six five nine six seven nine six, or you can visit her online at www.soulmystic.com. In fact, she's going to be on with us hour four tonight here on the X Zone. Also, by discovering the interlife, a new book from the author of Return, Dr. Georgina Cannon. It's a powerful book about your life between lives. And if you'd like further information, or maybe you'd like to buy a copy, it's a great book. Go to their website at www.lifebetweenlivescanada. Dot com, or you can call the Ontario Hypnosis Centre at 1-866-497-7469. That's 1-866-497-7469. Stephen Lachance is our guest. His website is www.stephenalachance.com. Now, Stephen, do you feel that there's a rise in these type of extreme hauntings, or do you feel that it's just because of the current emphasis in the media that's playing a role? Well, I think, you know, there, it's a little bit of both. You know, uh, five years ago I was, I was talking to, you know, uh, people like John Zaffis mm-hmm. and, and some of the others, and they were predicting that there was going to be a rise. And I, and I think there has been a little bit of that. Uh, we've seen a rise in these cases. But, you know, it's kind of hard because you, you do have the, the media focus uh, when you look at television. Uh, you know, right now we have uh, you wash and wear exorcism going on on television right now. Uh, you know, you're seeing things on television that I never thought you would, you would see ever before. Uh, you know, daily. <laughs> you know, so it's hard to tell. Uh, it seems like you know uh, a lot of the cases that we're getting uh, over and over. You know, you're having to go through them. Uh, very, very carefully, mm-hmm. um, because you, you know, a lot of it you can take care of um, on the phone, uh, one or two visits. Because uh, nine out of ten times, Rob, I got to tell you, it, it's in it's in people's minds. You know, there's a little bit of uh, hysteria going on out there, uh, and I think a lot of it is caused by the media. Yeah. Now, when you go out to investigate an extreme case, how do you proceed? <laughs> Cautiously, no. Yeah, but... <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I can just you, you know it takes it takes a lot. Mm-hmm. First of all, you know it's it's a lot of conversation before I'll even go into a case. Uh, you know, I, I'm talking to the people. I'm trying to figure out what's going on before I get there because I, I want to be careful 
uh, that I'm not stirring up anything before I get there as well. Um, you, the, the worst thing that I could think of going into a case is, is not understanding what I'm walking into and then walking into something and turning it, the house upside down. Uh, so I want to understand what I'm going into. So I, there's a lot of conversation that goes on uh, up front. Uh, and then we'll go in, and then we'll try to capture a little bit of evidence, not a whole lot of evidence. You know, I, you know I'll take two people with me, two, three at the tops. Uh, that's kind of why I left the research groups behind me, because I used to go in, you know, God bless them, you know, I, I had 26 people that I would take with me. Oh, my gosh. You know, you know, Missouri Paranormal actually got to be that big. You know, and I felt so horrible, you know, telling these guys, you know, shut down the cameras, get out. You know, um, and the, these, these were really people that were putting their heart into research. But when you get into one of these cases, the research becomes secondary. Safety becomes number one, and the, the family becomes number one. So, you know, you know I, I, I needed a small, small team. These are very private things. Uh, they're not something you're going to put out on the Internet or talk about. You know, that, that, uh, you that, know raises really. a, that raises a question. When you go into, uh, and when I'm, and when I'm saying you, I mean other, other uh, mm-hmm. paranormal researchers, when you go into a house with 26 people and all this equipment, what does that do to the family dynamics? It, it, it terrorizes them. It terrorizes them. You know, and you, and you, the thing is, is the family just looks at you, and and, and they're they're just you know it, it goes you go from victimization of the haunting to victimization of the team. You know what I'm saying? And and, and it's just it's a horrible situation. Um, and, you know, and that is the thing, you know, that I had to get away from. It was, you know, I didn't need all of those people. I didn't need that sort of thing. You know, the research, the researchers everywhere. You know, I had, I got away from what I started down this road, which was to help people. You know, so I had to pull back and I had to reevaluate what I was doing. And, you know, I think we all need to do that occasionally, you know. Yes. And, and, and when I did that, I thought, well, you know, you know, God bless them. They want to do research. Go ahead. Go do what you're doing. I'm pulling back, and this is what I'm doing. And, uh, because, and it works much better this way. I go in with a very small group. Um, and egos get in the way. The larger I found, the larger the group, the more ego that you have to deal with. And what I mean by that is, at any given time, I have to be willing to step out of a case. And, you know, because at any given time, I have to be willing to turn a case over to clergy. Mm-hmm. Um, because, you know, I have to be willing to say, I'm in over my head. Exactly. You know, because it, that's very important. Because you, you, this, this kind of thing is a team effort. You know, but I found that within you, you, you start working in in a larger group, those egos start to play, and you find that people don't want to let go. You know, they don't want to step back and say, you know, everybody wants to think I'm the conqueror. Well, you can't be the conqueror sometimes. You have to be able to step back and say, okay, I have to, I have to turn this over now. Because um, the, objective, that's, that's the, objective, what, the objective is to help the family. Absolutely, absolutely. And you have to be able to drop that ego and do yeah. that. And, uh, and that's why you have to work with a very limited amount of people, a limited group, a limited amount of equipment, and uh, a limited amount of, you know, you have to be able to trust the person next to you. Uh, I found the team name thing, I, I, that didn't work. Um, you know, and there was always that temptation of people wanting to put things on the Internet. You see, teams do that a lot, you know, mm-hmm. evidence, 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 everything, everybody is evidence-driven. Uh, you know, in these type cases, you know, I don't care if I go in and get an EVP or a picture. You know, that EVP or picture is the only important thing that that would be for me is if I go, let's say I go to Bishop Long or, or Bishop or whoever, and I'm, and I'm showing them a piece of evidence because I'm going to them and I'm saying, okay, I need you to come into a case and I'm turning this over to you. That's the only reason a piece of evidence would be important to me. You know, uh, really. I, I, you know, I, what am I out to prove? Am I out to prove to myself these things exist? Rob, I already know they do. Yeah. You know, I, I, I don't need that anymore. Um, I'm not going to go out to the world to prove it. You know, I think, 
it's really sad when I see these teams. You, you've seen the mission statements out there, haven't you? I sure have. I love those. The ones that say, I'm out to prove to the world that the, the, that the, 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 the paranormal exists. And I'm like, boy, oh boy, oh boy. You are going to be out there for years to come. And even if you do come across something that you could put out there and say, look what I got, you, you know, the biggest skeptic is going to come along and knock it down. Because the thing is, is you're never going to be able to prove that magic bullet. That's right. It, you know, it's just not. I'm sorry. Go ahead. I, I didn't mean to cut you off. No, no, no. What I was going to say is that and teams don't work with each other. Mm-hmm. There's no there's no exchange of information from one uh, ghost hunting research society to the next. Everybody right. likes to keep the information to themselves. And it's the same thing in ufology. It's the same thing with Sasquatch. It's mm-hmm. the same thing with um, you know crop circles, whatever. Everybody wants to do it themselves. And if they work together as a team, they'd get that much they would get so much ahead mm-hmm. that it's it's ridiculous. Why don't they work together? You know, I haven't figured it out. Everybody's got their own idea. Everybody's got their own idea. But I found that there's this subculture, this subculture of those that are out there doing this work that is there to help. Mm -hmm. And that is what the goal is. And that is what they're doing. And that is what they're accomplishing. And nothing else matters. And i got to tell you, it is the most rewarding, wonderful work that I've seen and that that I've enjoyed, and you know, and and that is what I've been doing, and what I've been focusing on, and I work very closely with all these other people, and I'm telling you, Rob, there's a lot of negative going on out there, but I think the positive is starting to rise to the top, and this is the subculture that's coming up, and it, the subculture that's coming up is the the, the, the culture that is there to help others. One eight seven seven five two eight eight two five five. Let's go to our phones. We have Kathleen joining us now. Hi, Kathleen. Hi, this is Kathleen. I have a question of the guest. Sure, go right ahead, dear. Well, I had a friend who lived in Orange, outside of Orangeville, and his house was haunted. The whole front of the house he couldn't use because it was freezing cold, and he had someone come in, two people in a group, come in and clean it, and got rid of it, but they taped it. And I, wa- and I heard the tape, and I could hear both sides of the people talking, the ghost that was haunting it and the people who were cleaning the house. Is that a real tape? Absolutely. You can surely, surely uh, get EVP just like that. And by the way, Rob, you know who this is talking to us? No, I don't. This is Kathleen O'Bannon, the carrot lady. Oh, hi, Kathleen. How are you? <laughs> yes, I know more than just carrots. <laughs> well, I don't know when it comes to carrots. You're number one. Uh, you're, you're the top of the carrot bunch in my book. There you go. Yeah, she, she's number one in my book, too. I, I recognize the voice right away. Um, yeah, Kathleen, you know, that's, that's quite common. You know, as a matter of fact, um, uh, I, there's a couple. Of, you know, one of the things that I'll do with uh, interview is I'll always set down a tape recorder next to me as I'm interviewing somebody um, because there is a lot of times – that you'll capture voices, especially in extreme cases and in a lot of demonic cases, that we will capture voices around, um, and that's how we'll make determinations. Actually, uh, one of the cases that I participated in an exorcism, an out-and-out exorcism, uh, how they made the determination is we had a tape running during the interview process, and it actually was the, the, the evidence that we needed that uh, actually got the exorcism performed. Wow, cool. All right, Kathleen, thanks very much for joining us tonight. Great talking to you. You well, take care of yourself. You. I'm glad to have the answer. I always worried whether this was a made up deal or not, and now I can see you really did have that did have a group come in and clean. There were only two people. Thanks so much. <laughs> you take care, sweetie. Yeah, bye. Bye bye. Bye bye. Well, that was a nice surprise. Um what kind of when, when you when the exorcism gets authorized, mm-hmm. was it authorized by the church? Well, you know, in this in this case, it was actually outside of the church. Um, in this case, we were dealing with someone that, if I would have brought a church collar into a mm-hmm. uh, Catholic collar into this family, yes. uh, we wouldn't have been able to. I had to go out evangelical um, to bring him. 
that happens. Um, but sometimes, yeah, you, sometimes, most of the majority of the time, you have to go through the church and you have to get authorization. What kind of things uh, were happening uh, during this exorcism? Did this, in this case, Rob, this was scary because you had a four-year-old girl who was being told to kill her four-month-year-old brother. Oh, boy. Yeah. And uh, the, the mother was the, actually the one that was, the, the possession was absolutely going through. And uh, the exorcist, the exorcist, he, as we went through the exorcism, the mother got up and she ran. Uh, the exorcist told me to grab her. And uh, she she got physically ill, and I gotta tell you, I, I never thought of these things being physically manifested, mm -hmm. but I could feel I could actually feel things moving in her body. I could feel her vertebrae start to readjust. I could feel something moving in her. Actually, her bones were moving inside her. Uh, it was very very physical. Uh, she passed out of my arms. I laid her down. And then the exorcist looked at me, and he said, he goes, because I must have been white at that point. And he looked at me and goes, you felt it, didn't you? And I said, yeah. And I said, I had no idea it was so physical. But these are very physical things, you know. Uh, they, affect, they affect people in a very physical way. Steve, stand um, by. We've got to take our final sure. break for this hour. Stephen A. Lachance is our special guest. His website, www.stephenalachance.com. He's the author of The Uninvited, The True Story of the Union Screaming House. And it's going to be released uh, to the public on September 1st, but you can get pre, you can pre-order at Amazon.com. We'll be back on the other side of this break as we continue right here in the Exxon. This is the Exxon Broadcast Network, broadcasting worldwide on broadcast affiliates and satellite program providers, including CNN Broadcast Network, Sirius Satellite Network, Star Media, Good News Radio Network, Angel Broadcast Network, Wiki Broadcast Network, and WPBN-TV. For more information on the X-Zone Broadcast Network, visit us at www.xzbn.net. Hi, I'm Larry Lawson, host of Paranormal Stakeout. With over 36 years in law enforcement, I have learned a few things. The most important is the proper gathering and preservation of evidence is vital to putting the bad guy behind bars. It's no different in the world of paranormal investigation. Whether it's the search for the afterlife, cryptozoology, UFOs, and extraterrestrials, how we gather the evidence, preserve that evidence, and present it to a jury of our peers will make the ultimate difference in proving the existence of worlds and entities that are beyond our imagination. Join me, Larry Lawson, every week on Paranormal Stakeout when, along with my guests, we'll take a journey to prove with indisputable evidence what man has struggled to believe for centuries. Go to xzbn.net for the broadcast schedule and check me out at paranormalstakeout.com. True healing must address four levels, physical, emotional, mental, and spiritual, for us to live joyful and productive lives. We tend to treat three of the four, leaving the spiritual languishing. If you're tired of the same dysfunctional patterns cropping up in your life, soul balancing is for you. Trixie Phelps, owner and founder of Soul Balancing, is a naturally gifted energy healer trained in numerous esoteric forms, including shamanism. Trixie has created a powerful modality that safely and effectively clears your energetic field. A soul balancing session can remove interference, heal trauma, and restore your hope. Contact Trixie for a life-changing long-distance session today, www.soulbalancing.world. Stephen, after an exorcism is uh, performed or after any major um, cleansing of, of a home for uh, of a demonic possession or, or spirit, how do the people in the house readjust? Is, is there any psychological help for them? Absolutely. You have to have psychological help. It's got to go hand in hand. Uh, Post-traumatic stress. Uh, you know, is, 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 is it goes hand in hand mm -hmm. with it. You got to remember, you know, one of the, the things that the demonic one wants to accomplish is it wants to destroy the psyche. You know, so 
so the, there is emotional damage that's done. Uh, Any time that you hear of, of exorcism or uh, an extreme case where there was a blessing or any type of uh, this type of intervention, uh, they better have, have talked about emotional counseling along with it, Robert. They, they haven't done it properly um, because it, it has to be done both. Both things have to be done uh, or, or you're not going to accomplish anything. They're just going to slide back into whatever it is that, that, that it was, whether it be uh, an emotional funk, you know, mm-hmm. uh, you know, th- th- where they live years and years and years with the post-traumatic stress, or they're going to go right back into the spiritual problems that that, that caused the, the problem in the first place. Uh, it's a twofold thing. You 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 always take care of the medical and the spiritual together. It's 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 essential. Um, you know that's what I, I, that's what they did with me. That's what they did with we did with the union case. That's what I've done with every single one of my cases. It's essential that it's done that way. And I guarantee you, if you if it's done that way, you're going to have a higher success rate than if you don't. But Ari, we're talking about you and and the way that you do things, and mm. you know you do it in a professional manner. Mm. However, with all these new up and coming groups out there that call themselves researchers or investigators, Oof. Yeah. yeah. What about the people? What about the public who who may not have any idea what they're getting themselves into, and they bring in a, a group of of unexperienced researchers? Right. Who who start dabbling in things that they have no concept of what they're getting into? They cause more problems than enough, and then they just walk out and say, "Hey, listen, we're sorry for the mess we caused, but goodbye." Unfortunately, it happens all the time and time again, and it's what it happened to it happened to, to us as well. Uh, and that's exactly why I started doing the work. You know, unfortunately, you know, uh, Rob, you know, I clean up a lot of messes. Uh, you know, the thing is, is, you know, one of the things that I want to accomplish, you know, one of the things that I wanted to accomplish with this book was, you know, to, to demonstrate how not to make messes, mm-hmm. you know, and I hope enough, uh, enough of the so-called investigators will pick it up and read it, um, hopefully. You know, the only thing that we can hope for is that we get out there and we, we talk enough and we try to educate and we try to reach people. That's what Haunted Survivor the Tour is going to be about, is try to reach enough of these people, enough of the general public, and enough of the investigators to hopefully keep people out of trouble. Steve, but, you know, I hate to do this, buddy, but we've run out of time for tonight. Do do. All right, Steve, take care of yourself. Continue right, success, buddy, and we, we look forward to talking to you again in the near future. Regards Absolutely. to the family. Take care, my friend. Bye-bye, my friend. Stephen A. Lachance, www.stephenalachance.com, S-T-E-V-E-N-A-L-A-C-H-A-N-C-E.com. When we come back from the news at the top of the hour, Dr. Seth Shostak is going to be my very special guest. We're going to be talking about SETI and his appearance on the Larry King Show last Friday night. My name's Rob McCall. This is the Exxon Live and Around the World on the Talkstar Radio Network. <laughs> 